Just like a parent kicking a 30-year-old out of the house, finally, Carnival Corporation jettisoned 15 of its cruise ships in a very short period of time to make room for the baby. That's right, Carnival Cruise Corporation. They're bringing on a brand new cruise ship in 2020, and it's a big one. Can't wait to tell you about that. And there's some fallout in Norway. Let's get that straight. Some fallout in Norway over what's happening with Hertha Gruden, plus a whole lot more cruise news, maybe even some positive stories. All that on today's episode of the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I'm your host for this journey today, Tony. If you enjoyed that cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of the episodes. Well, let's take a tour around the world and look at the cruise news. You may be asking yourself, hey, Tony, wasn't there a positive test on a cruise ship in Norway? Does anybody care about that still? It's been two days. Is there any fallout? Yeah. Norway has suspended sailing of all cruising vessels holding over 100 passengers for the next 14 days. They're going to take a fortnight, not the video game, but two weeks to decide whether or not cruising can resume as they assess what actually happened with Hertegruden. At last count, at least 36 crew members and four passengers have tested positive for the virus, all of the crew on the Rolled Almondson has been tested, and after that testing, it is only the 36 crew members that have tested positive. They've been removed from the cruise ship, so the remaining crew on the ship uh, all there with a negative test. More information continues to become available about this situation. Up to 69 municipalities in Norway possibly affected by this as passengers returned home to their communities after potentially being exposed on the cruise ship. And Hertha Gruden, as they continue to evaluate, they've made the decision to suspend all expedition cruising until further notice. This cancellation affects the Rolt Almondson, the Fritjof Nansen, and the Spitsbergen cruise ships. In a statement, CEO Daniel Skeldium said, The safety and well-being of our guests and crew is Hertha Gruden's number one priority. We are now focusing all available efforts in taking care of our guests and colleagues. We are working closely with the Norwegian national and local health authorities for follow-up information, further testing, and infection tracking. These steps by Norway and Hertzegrud, not super surprising to me. Of course, there's going to be an evaluation period after something like this happens, uh, but not super long. They didn't say they'd close down for months. And so you have the government and the company re-evaluating what to do next. Hertzegrud also operates a lot of coastal ferries and other vessels along the Norwegian coast. Those operations will continue as they reevaluate expedition cruising. Carnival Corporation's Costa Cruising looking to sell in Italy in the short term. They have submitted to the Italian government their health plan. Wisely, Carnival Corporation engaged Italian health experts to come up with their protocols before they submitted it to the Italian government. Highlighting a couple of the protocols when it comes to bringing crew on board, it is a three test and quarantine process. Potential crews are tested twice in their home country. If they show negative tests both times, they are allowed to travel to the ship. Once they get to the ship, they are onboarded and put into a 14-day quarantine. And during the quarantine period, they are tested again. And if they have a negative result, they will be allowed to work. Costa employing social distancing and a mask policy in addition to heightened cleaning and sanitation. The way the mask policy works is Masks are required for all indoor spaces for both crew and passenger, and they are required in outdoor spaces where social distancing cannot be achieved. I really think this is going to be the new norm in cruising when it comes to masking and social distancing. Mask on the inside and mask where social distancing cannot be achieved. I would not be surprised if that's what cruising looks like around the world, at least in the short term. That's what we've seen on a lot of these cruise lines resuming cruising. And they've also outlined how they've increased their medical facilities on the cruise ship, the ability to test on board, and a plan on how to isolate and then remove affected passengers and crew from the cruise ship should an outbreak occur. Costa just waiting on approval from the Italian government before they can resume sailing. It should be noted that another Carnival Corporation cruise line, IATA, 
did not get approval yet from the Italian government to begin sailing in Germany. Two of the Aida cruise ships flagged with Italian flags, and the Italian government has not yet given them permission to sail. This Costa request goes in line along with Aida's request, waiting on the Italian government to give the thumbs up, the approval for sailing. And we do know that MSC plans to launch two ships around Italy in the middle of August. And so it does seem only a matter of time before the approval will be forthcoming for the Carnival Corporation cruise lines of Costa and IATA. It could be speculated that one of the reasons that MSC has approval to sail and Carnival Corporation does not yet is MSC's really stepped up what their health protocols are going to look like. They've limited their passenger base to just a certain region there in Italy. Some of the health protocols being used by MSC, they will be sailing at a reduced capacity by about 70% of its normal capacity. All passengers will be tested prior to boarding the ship. The requirement is that all passengers have an RT-PCR test within 72 hours of boarding, and passengers on these cruises will only be able to take MSC excursions so that they can be monitored during their time off the ship. And to eliminate people's financial worries, there will be free medical treatment given to anyone showing symptoms of the virus. It will be interesting to see how all this goes for MSC. Again, those sailings start on August the 16th. So it's been discussed ad nauseum. Should the United States government help out the cruise lines? Many people raising their hands saying, well, these aren't really American companies. No, the government should not help out the cruise lines. But what about something a little closer to home? The port over here in Port Canaveral, they're laying off a lot of staff and they're struggling because they're losing money as the cruise shut down goes forward. The port is normally staffed with 268 people, but they've been reduced to 153 after another round of reductions last week. The reductions have come through layoffs, unpaid furloughs, and leaving vacant positions unfilled. To date, Port Canaveral estimates a loss of around $17.44 million dollars related to the cruising shutdown. Leadership there at Port Canaveral has joined 69 other officials in a coalition to petition Congress for emergency relief for U.S. ports. In their petition to Congress, they note that to date, no funding has been provided in any of the COVID-19 legislation to assist ports and the maritime transportation system, despite emergency relief being provided to other modes of transportation. They're crying foul, and I, I don't blame them. If you're seeing other transportation, other modes of transportation getting relief, but because you're a seaport, because you're associated with the cruise industry, maybe you're not getting relief. It doesn't seem fair. The companies that run the ports are American companies with American workers who are struggling right now in the middle of this crisis. Uh, I hope that their request does not fall on deaf ears. We will need these cruise ports when cruising resumes. I got at least this one feel-good story today. How many people were bummed out that are Holland America fans when the Rotterdam got sold off. The Rotterdam is an iconic ship associated with Holland America. And what you may not know is there's been multiple Rotterdams and Holland America, they're going to keep that tradition alive. You can't have Holland America without having a Holland America Rotterdam. So they're going to take the name Rotterdam and slap it on one of their new cruise ships. There's currently a 2,668 passenger cruise ship being built. It has the name the Rhine Dam right now, and it will debut with the name Rotterdam. So for all of you fans of Holland America that were bummed out that the Rotterdam's going away, well, it's coming back, coming back, and it's a whole new ship. That's pretty exciting. Can Carnival Cruise Line rename a new cruise ship the Fantasy, please? You're doing it with the Rotterdam over there. Let's start a petition. But let's talk about the interesting big news. Big is in mega cruise ship news. A lot of people have smelt weakness as Carnival Corporation's gotten rid of 15 cruise ships in rapid succession. But a lot of people have been laying back going, well, you know, they're just going to replace those cruise ships. It may be later rather than sooner. But uh, we're going to get one in 2020, and we're going to get a big one. I'll call it a mega ship. Just announced over the last couple of days, P&O will take possession of the Iona in 2020. This is a beautiful cruise ship. It has a capacity of over 5,000. This is going to be P&O's new flagship. It's going to be the biggest jewel in the crown for P&O, and it may possibly carry passengers in 2020. You may remember that one of the cruise ships that Carnival Corp did dump this year was the P&O Oceana, built back in 1999, only holding around 2,000 passengers. So here you go. Let's get back into the capacity versus inventory discussion. P&O Oceana, 2,000 passengers, 
gone from P&O's inventory, but now replaced with a 5,000 passenger single ship, a mega ship as it were. And that's not all. There is a sister ship to the Iona that will be coming out in 2022. So you're getting 10,000 berths replacing 2,000 berths. Boom. The inventory is already back. So it's going to be interesting to see as this inventory comes on what the pricing will do. But yes, Carnival Corporation taking ownership of a mega ship in 2020. Honestly, it makes me a little jealous. It's going to sail out of Southampton. That's a place I can't go to right now. And so uh, I'm excited to maybe see some of our UK friends, our UK cruisers, jump on the Iona and take her for a spin. Show me the new cruise ship. A mixed bag of news today. Cruising still continues to march forward in some places while it completely shuts down in others. That's the crazy world that we live in. Thank you for watching the show. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing. This is Tony for the La Lida Loca Crew Show. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.